Hello and welcome to my channel. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Please subscribe to this channel and also click the little bell to be notified every time I upload. Thank you for watching. I'm going to start this week's video with one eye done and one eye not done. So if you're new to the channel you're very very welcome thank you so much for joining us it's lovely to have new people um, and especially if you leave a comment that's lovely as well if you're not new then thank you for coming back i appreciate every single person that watches any video that i've made whether it's way back before i was speaking to camera or even if you've just joined, I appreciate everybody's view. Thank you. So today I'm going to be um, reviewing some Stargazer Neon Eye Dusts. I've done one eye so that you can see it. And I want you to see as I go how I get on with them. Um, basically everybody seemed to be going mad for neons recently so i thought i'd get a couple well i got three actually i got a green a yellow and a blue because i thought i'd probably be able to do most with those and i've tried to do a look here um which is my style but using these um, neon eye dusts Anyway, Stargazer is a brand which goes back into the mists of time, as far as I'm aware. Um, I used to use them quite a lot back in the day. Um, and I have got my eye primer on already, by the way. And um, I've got a red of theirs. I've got a couple of things. And I've, you know, I've never had anything against them. They're very affordable. Um, but I... I'm going to say right up the top here, I think with these neon things, you get what you pay for, to be fair. So here's the three colours. This is the blue one. Just tap into the lid there, I'll give it a little swatch. See, it's just all over the shop, really. Here's the green one. Different finger. See, it's a bit better. I think it's just the blue one that's annoyed me, to be fair. These other two are not so bad. Here's the yellow one coming up. And obviously this is on unprimed skin, no makeup. There we go. So, subtle is the word i'll just do a bit more blue yeah but depends what you're after really i mean if you want something reasonably subtle then they're good but would you want subtle if you were going for neons choice is yours um, first of all i just tried with the eyeshadow dust didn't really seemed to grab onto me very well then i tried with some mixing liquid and tried that that it didn't like that even more so i'm just and the fallout well is just ridiculous so i'm just going to show you how i got on so i'm just going to put some of the blue here and as you can see it it is quite patchy it's i thought it was going to be a lot more um pigmented than this i really did think that it was going to be what because looking at it on the in the jar in the little pot it looks really bright so I'm just putting it on with a flat brush because that was the best way I thought of doing it and bringing it across over the top of my crease like so and then just tailing it out a bit. See it it goes into little crumbles. Now 
it might be my skin I don't know I really couldn't say but I'm going to get some blending brushes here and we'll see how we go with those so I do hope you've all been well recently and thank you very much for um, watching my fashion video last week um, if you haven't seen it it's quite different to any of the other videos I've done before um, I really enjoyed it it took took a bit of doing lots of changing and lots and lots of editing but you know I quite enjoy that side of it when I left university in 1983 I had a job as an apprentice in a film cutting room and in those days film was what everything was shot on I mean video was just coming into its own this is the green by the way and I'm going to try and blend it as much as I can I will have to go back and forth with this it's just one of those things anyway video was really in its early early days and everything was shot on film most television programs were shot on 16 millimeter film and movies were shot on 35 or um, bigger if they were blockbusters and I learned how to cut 16 mil film and editing then was literally you cut it with a blade and you stick the two bits of film together with tape and that's what I was used to so when I came to learn how to do editing for this I just it's very difficult where you want to get your hands in and cut it and stick it together and the same with the sound you had lots of different 16 millimeter brown audio sound tapes with all the different tracks the music the background the people speaking and you would line them all up on reels and wind them through by hand and try and get them all to match up and that's what the clapperboard's for on movies it's so that you can line up the frame where the clap comes together with the actual clap sound on the soundtrack tape so you would just there's a little tiny screen a couple of inches like that and you look and you find the one frame where the clapper claps and then you line up your sound on the 16 millimeter sound tape and you just listen and listen and you get the exact moment and then you draw a line with white china graph pencil and you know that you've got it and as long as it's lined up by that then you know it's it's going to be in sync so that was how it was done in the dark ages um i'm sure you all knew that anyway so with these um stargazer eye dusts i'm just going back and forth back and forth trying to get the color to really um, grab hold and as I say it's not as pigmented as I'd hoped it would be I mean it's nice and if you want something subtle then it would probably be ideal subtle not my middle name though so I'm just going to carry on this is the green again I wonder if they have they got actual names neon yellow neon blue and neon green obviously so let's get a bit of the yellow yes yeah, so that was back in the 1983 I think I got that job in the September and oh yeah this is the yellow here we let me just rub most of the green off on my trusty tea towel and 
it was in the West End in London in Soho before they knocked it all down honestly I went up there recently for a course with the job where I am now and the entire block where my old cutting room offices were has been razed to the ground with that new um, bit of Tottenham Court Road tube that they're doing I nearly sat down and wept I can't tell you that was my first job it was all my memories of that time just gone in the stroke of a wrecking ball very bizarre but funny story because in those days um, Soho was basically a red light area um, and you'd walk around all the little tiny streets and there'd be lots and lots of um, postcards stuck up with sellotape, a handwritten sign saying, young model, please walk up, um, or Brazilian model, please walk up. And it was, you know, where people went to find um, sex workers, is what we call them these days. And um, because that's what the area was all about, Every time I went out, like if I had to go and do um, an errand for my boss or go and get some lunch or whatever it was, I would have to take an empty film can with me, you know, big round silver flat film can, because I would just always be being stopped by men in the street going, business, if I didn't have a film can under my arm. But such were the days not like that now of course it's all gentrified and done up and completely different but that's how it was then so yeah so green blue and I've got a tiny bit of purple on this brush that I'm just going to try and blend into there. Like that. There we go. Um, and the I like the yellow best of all, I think, actually. Yeah, I think I do. And we take it a little bit out there. Let's see how I've done it there. Oh, okay. See, I'm so busy telling you stories. I've forgotten to take it out to the side enough. So yeah, I mean, what did we do? We did television programmes, we did desperately unexciting pharmaceutical company promotional movies. Um, I mean, it was all one guy, me, and his partner, dreadful man. Um, and we had a cameraman that we used a lot nice Scottish man called Gordon um, and we sometimes would go off and shoot things with Gordon um, we once went to because we were involved with doing things with the BBC quite often um, and we once went off to Norfolk to shoot um, a program about two young boys who looked after injured um, birds of prey. That was nice. It was in the winter, that was bloody cold. Um, Norfolk, very flat. But then I'm sure you knew that. We, um, we did a, what's the word? Charity promotional record once with Dr. Miriam Stoppard, who you may know. Um, and that was at a children, like a hospital for children with arthritis. Oh, it was very sad. Um, they were trying to raise money to get a new pool to help the children because obviously with arthritis, anything that takes the 
um, weight off their joints is um, what they need. And because it was a Christmas single, we had lots of empty cardboard boxes wrapped up in Christmas paper for ill children sitting in bed to open and try and look happy about receiving. But yeah, no, Miriam Stoppard was very nice. I liked her. Um, right, so I think I've got the hang of that. So as I say, not the most pigmented in the world, but I will continue to try and use them. And just underneath, just to make a little bit of change, I've got this um, Makeup Revolution Awesome Metals eyeshadow, and it's in the shade Emerald Goddess. So carrying on with the green theme there, and I've got my Jessup 322 brow brush. I don't know if I've mentioned these Jessup brushes before, but they are terrific. You get them on Amazon, I'm just going to run this under my lower lash line. You get them on Amazon and um, I think you get about 15 brushes for about £15. So they're super good value. There we go, just a bit of, just a little bit of glitter there. And in a corner, yes, you've guessed it, it's Makeup Revolution, Crushed Pearls in Saint. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit there. Just there. And there. And then I'm going to go in with my Essence Liquid Ink Eyeliner. Which is this one. I've already put some Barry M waterproof in my waterline and my tight line, so we'll just go in with this. Yeah, so Dean Street was where my cutting room was, quite near Wardle Street, Frith Street, all those streets. Solo Square, Golden Square, there we go. Oh, gone down a bit far, oh no, disaster, gone down a bit too far there, let's try and save that. Oh, I think it's too late, I think I've bollocksed it up completely. Well, you'll have to give, forgive me. I was getting carried away. So... Holding breath. Coming in. There we go. And you can see there, I just take it down like this. Join it onto the line on my lid by my lash line. And when the folds settle down, you can just fix it like that. There we go. Okay, now the one thing I have done differently this week is I've got my e.l.f whatever it's called. It's like a glitter eyeshadow. It's a black one. They do do other colours which I must get. And I've got this little tiny, tiny brush I sent off for some uh, nail art brushes on Amazon because I watched Make Me Up Miss the other day as usual, which I seem to spend my entire life doing. And um, she was saying she uses nail art brushes for lots of close-up detailed work so as you know anything that Missa does is fabulous in my eyes so if I'm not buying something she's recommended I don't know what I'm doing there we go so I'm just putting this on top of the eyeliner I think it looks really nice actually 
I'll just take it out a little bit along the eye liner. Down there, like that. Yeah, so on, um, I'm fairly sure it was on Wardour Street, there was a pub called the Intrepid Fox. And it was like one of the oldest pubs in Soho. And all the alternative people used to get in there. Oh, it's gone now, of course but it was just the coolest pub in the entire world. I mean, there's a lot of cool places around there at the time. All sorts of cool people to hang out with. I used to um, regularly bump into Ken Russell's son, Xavier Russell. less said about him the better but it was a different time you know anyway I'm using I haven't told you what I'm using I'm using my Catrice Lashes to Kill Pro mascara um, just for a change from my Lash Princess really and I find it is very good for lower lashes Pretty good for upper ones as well. And if you have got hooded eyes, do try this trick with the eyeliner because if you just carry on as if you had unhooded eyes, it just goes all wonky and looks weird. Um, but if you draw the line down and then just join it up together, it really does work. Anywho, um, I'm just going to do my lash um, and then I'll come back and we will recap on Star Gazer Neon Eye Dusts. Um, just one other tip, um, I'm sure, like me, that you try and get your money's worth out of your lashes as much as you can and I like to wear them three four hundred times no I like to wear them as often as I can but they do tend to get very dusty and covered in eyeshadow or glitter or whatever you put near them so I've taken to using not my essence liquid ink but another cheaper from the pound shop black liquid eyeliner and just painting over where all the coloured eyeshadow is staining them so there's a tip for you anyway give me five seconds no a bit more than five seconds um, I'll put my lash on and I'll come back right and I'm back both lashes are on just um, and I think if you want neon eyeshadow that's really going to blow you away and make a big impact and be really something special then maybe don't go for the stargazer ones maybe go for something a little bit um dearer perhaps some a company that specialize in doing things like that i mean as i say i will use them um because they're there and they weren't super expensive either so I haven't broken the bank um, but I hope you like the look um, normally I would go with like a green or a blue lip but I thought I'll ring the changes and just do like a nice burgundy lip to go with this and I think it looks quite nice so thanks very much for watching everybody I hope you all stay well and safe and look after each other because I will know if you don't and stay weird. Bye for now everybody, bye.